what's going on in the game dev world today we're going to be looking at rigid body 2ds so over here we have a square it's just a regular sprite a regular game object with a sprite renderer on it so over here we have a rigid body 2d square this is a game object with a sprite renderer and a rigid body 2d and a box collider now rigid body 2ds are things that add physics to uh, your game component so that's gravity mass momentum drag that adds all of that into this little image here right here just a regular image now we have an object that'll move around fall react to gravity in the game in the box collider right here eh, you can't let me turn this right renderer off so you see this green outline this is the edges of the box collider they collide with other colliders so over here we have a static one it's got a box collider as well so when this falls it will collide with this and stay there and there you go and this one did not move at all because it is just an image the, this does not have any rigid bodies on it now for our body type on rigid body 2d we have a dyna dynamic body type it's the most common body type a dynamic body will collide with every other body type and is the most interactive of the body types so it's it's also the most performance heavy so having a bunch of these will slow your game down rather than having a few so you only use it for what you really need to use it for now that's dynamic now we're talking about kinematic body types which basically they will only move by programmed movements so you can't run into them see if these were both dynamic this one's actually uh, static but if these were both dynamic rigid bodies when you you hit play this one would knock into this one and flip it all around and it wouldn't stay still so if it was also a kinematic body type it would still land on it unless our kinematic body type was programmed to move it would not move at all and then we have our static body type which I'm talking about this one right here and the static body type is it's designed to not move under simulation at all if anything collides with it a static body behaves like an immovable object Due to their limited behavior, only a very limited set of properties are available for the body type. So you see this one under the rigid body right here, all of the options have been basically taken away. Right here we have all of this. We have simulated, auto mass, mass, drag, gravity, collision detection, all of that. But with the static, it, it doesn't move at all. So that that's all, all it's got. All right, now let's move on simulated the simulated property is common to all available body types when you enable a simulated property the following will occur the rigid body 2d moves by the simulation gravity and physics forces are applied uh, any attached joint 2d's are simulated and constrain the attached rigid body 2d all internal physics objects for rigid body 2D, collider 2D, and joint 2D stay in memory. Now when you disable the simulated property, it's, it's basically nothing's going to happen. It's not going to be affected by gravity. It's not going to move. So you usually leave simulated on. All right. Let's move on here. Now mass, think of that as like, like a weight. Like like how much like if you throw a ball and it hits a board now if you throw a very light ball and it hits the board the board's not going to move very much but if you throw like a bowling ball at a board which has a, a lot of mass it's going to move it a lot faster and a lot farther we have drag again think of throwing a ball when you throw a ball eventually it slows down now that's that's the same thing's going to happen here the more drag you add the faster the object is going to slow down and then angular drag is basically rotational drag so if it's rotating really fast the higher you make the angular drag 
the the faster it's going to slow down. The lower you make the angular drag, the slower it takes to slow down. Gravity scale is just like regular gravity. The the higher you make this number, it's things are going to fall faster and harder. It's going to be harder to jump. Just like just like gravity on the moon. There's less gravity on the moon, so when you jump, you kind of like float a little bit. But on Earth, you jump and fall straight back down. So if you set it higher, it would be like Earth. If you set it lower, it would be like the moon. Or you can set this to zero completely, and it will not be affected by gravity. And this is something that you do if you're using a rigid body to control a player in like a top-down game. You set the gravity scale to zero, so he doesn't fly down the screen, but only moves when you put input in. And you can use rigid bodies to make simple player input movement. Now collision detection, we have discrete and continuous. Now the discrete, it's it, it, it's kind of like choppy. Like you, if you're moving fast enough, I could fly straight through this this bar here. But I'll I'll like miss a window for when it's checking if there's a collision. But if I set it to continuous then it'll check a bunch of times while I'm on my way here and it usually never never misses the collision and I won't fall through the bar sleeping mode start awake start asleep and never sleep so this is basically like something that you could start the game object to sleep if you have a bunch of things hindering your performance uh, having these physics calculations always going on in the background is also something that can be performance heavy so you could start asleep and then activate it later in a script. So you're saving yourself on a bunch of performance. Interpolate. There's interpolate and extrapolate. You use interpolate if, like, for example, you have a rigid body 2D that's controlling a player. And you're moving your player around and he's feeling really kind of jittery. Kind of like buggy back and forth on the screen. Interpolate is there to smooth out the movement and make it way more smooth. Now constraints. We have the freeze position on the X and Y axis and then freeze position on the Z axis. So that, that's exactly what you think it all does. Like for example, for a freeze rotation on the Z axis, you can hit like an edge in, in the game or in your editor with your colliders and your rigid body 2Ds and it's just like real world so you could start spinning or if you have a ball a circle collider 2D and it's rolling down a hill and you don't want it to roll you can freeze the rotation on the Z axis and that freezes rotation so it won't turn it'll stay in the position you have it in you can also freeze the position for the x-axis and the y-axis so if I freeze the position for the x-axis on this it's not gonna go side to side it will only go up and down and the opposite for the y-axis if I freeze that it's not gonna go up and down it would only move side to side and that's that's gonna get you started on rigid body 2D's uh, I've been gone for a while I've been working on some more stuff like learning more in depth about game development so I am back now and I am here to help you on your journey as well so thank you very much for watching uh, hit that like button it'll help more people see it and you all have a great day and good luck